Good seeing you, man. Good to see you, man. How's it going? It's going, dude. It's rainy out there, right? Yeah, it's a beautiful day here in New York City. Are you guys in the middle of the tour? Or is the this is actually the beginning of the tour, and tonight is a Terminal 5, as you know. How do you feel about maybe checking out some records or something at Bleaker Street, and then make our way to the venue? Alright, cool. Awesome. Is the last time I saw you the video shoot? It might have been, yeah. Cheap sunglasses, the track that you sent me, obviously, it was pretty realized that the actual track and production before I'd heard it. Where, was that working at home on that, or? Uh, yeah, that one sort of, I, I did it all in my studio. I had almost given up on it, actually. And really? That's so funny. Yeah. As soon as I heard that one, it was so obvious that that one yeah. in particular just stood out. I didn't, I don't think I even knew you were gonna work on that. I got excited about that one. Cheap Sunglasses was a title he and I had had for a while that we yeah. were on the right home for. We were like, oh, it'd be cool to do the song about people kind of being fake and, yeah, yeah. and putting in the context of this. And it's funny how even ideas like that float around for a while before you find home for them. I love it when stuff like that just it's works. Easy, yeah. Right? So when you're working on the track, like what were you listening to at the time? I was actually listening to a lot of Paul Simon, like Graceland and all that stuff. I just love Paul Simon, I kind of grew up with it. I mean, I feel like ultimately when you write music, it's sort of like a melting of your own influences. I played in jazz band in high school until I got kicked out of it. What did you play, guitar? Yeah, I couldn't really read it though, so I would just play like C7 all the time. Yeah. Were you a Nirvana fan? That, that's how I started playing guitar. So Nirvana, I... yeah. Same, actually. We got one of, one of the Paul Simon records. It's not Graceland, I don't know if they have Graceland. Oh, here it is. Oh, okay. yeah. It's uh, getting a little bit later. We should probably head over to Terminal 5. There you go. Awesome, thanks. It's really cool when you know people have like a certain attachment to a song because I think sometimes people have more of an attachment to it than I do, and that, that's just that's cool because like it hopefully means something to them, you know. But like maybe it means something completely different to me. I think that's the thing that trips me out the most is I realize that there's records and there's songs that, for me growing up, affected me in such huge mm -hmm. ways, like songs that were parts of times of my life that are so definitive and yeah, you think yeah. that you have an opportunity to create that for other people yeah, yeah it's, it's like it's mind-boggling to yeah. me that, that somebody views I, music that you make in your bedroom the same way as you view some of your favorite songs. yeah yeah all right we are here so night two for you guys huh biggest show to date sold out it's crazy to think what like Especially with this particular song, because you always see tweets and people talking about hearing it like just out in the open, like, oh, I heard it at Apple Coffee. Yeah, yeah. It, you know? Like, I heard it at Coffee Bean the other day in LA, and then I saw it on the news in the morning what? Like, <laughs> on KTLA. And it's cool when a song kind of like just lives like that and yeah. just kind of around. It's special, it's cool. So I'm, I'm stoked that we're here and we're, we're going to get to go do this. Thanks so much for, for being a part of this, and I think we're going to have a blast out there. It's going to be fun, man.